Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. Um, I would like to acknowledge my colleague, um, Senator Day, over here, um, particularly his comments <coughs> around um, lowering speed limits um, as a lazy attempt uh, at road safety, when in reality um, we do pay a lot in fuel excise and other road taxes. Uh, we could be focusing on building much better and safer roads. And I come from a rural area, so I get to see some shockers. Um, I rise, I'd also like to um, acknowledge um, the Greens' commitment on um, uh, public transport, um, and off the back of saying that I come from a rural area, I don't necessarily think they really do speak on behalf of the masses of uh, country people, people that have to drive 20, 30 minutes through potholes to get to their local um, uh, point of public transport and then have to go home, replace tyres and suspension components because not enough money has been spent on roads. I rise to speak on the um, Excise Tariff Amendment Fuel Indexation Bill 2014 and related bills. It will come as no surprise, as a senator representing the Australian Motoring Enthusiast Party, that I would have something to say on this issue. The, bill currently before the, Senate, or the bills currently before the Senate are similar to the 2014 package of bills which did not progress through the Senate. The bills currently before the Senate uh, validate the excise tariff proposal number one 2014 custom tariff proposal uh, and 2014 tariff proposals that were tabled in the House of Representatives on the 30th of October 2014 to index fuel duty to the consumer price index from the 10th of November 2014. The legislation is expected to raise $3.6 billion over five years to the end of 2018-19 and $23 billion over the next decade. Given the similarities, I would like to spend a bit of time discussing the 2014 package of bills and how the proposed changes were received within the motoring community. The 2014 package of bills were referred to the Senate Economics Legislation Committee and the committee's report was tabled on 7 July 2014. Evidence presented, uh, evidence presented to the committee can be grouped in three broad areas. One, support for the indexation, but with assurances that the tax credit arrangements will be taken into account and compensate for the increase in indexation. Two, support for the indexation, but with additional funds raised to be dedicated to projects that go beyond road infrastructure. And three, opposition to the package of bills because of concerns over the disproportionate uh, ad adverse effects that increasing petrol price could have on particular communities, <coughs> lack of transparency and accountability associated with a special account, and the potential to undermine the positive results stemming from the funds credit credited to the, social, uh, to the special account by withdrawing funds from other areas of road infrastructure. Some other arguments in favour of the pro proposed changes were it would generate significant revenue. The excise is not a new tax. Index indexations work by maintaining the real value of, exi of existing tax. So it is a tax. Taxes on motor fuel are very low compared to other developed countries. For example, fuel, in tax, uh, fuel tax in Germany is approximately three times as much as Australia. Uh, but we live in Australia, not Germany. Arguments opposing the bill include it will increase the cost of running a car. On, on average, a motorist in Australia, as Senator Day actually pointed out, um, driving around 10, 11 litres uh, per 100 kilometres would need to fork out an extra $60, $68 annually by the fourth year. If a motorist uses 60 um, litres a, leak, a week, this would increase um, to additional 142 annually by the fourth year. Um, and not everybody drives one car. Some families have more than one and some people use a lot more than 60 litres per week. Indexation would hit low-income earners the most, and of course those in rural and regional areas. The price impact of any increase will, fo will fall most heavily on households and users of light commercial vehicles used off-road, so not mining companies. Although, I won't go there yet. The opposition decided to vote against the measures at the time, saying it broke a government promise not to introduce new taxes. With the opposition now coming on board, to support this broken promise, they have opened themselves up to criticism. Opposition leader Mr Bill Shorten said yesterday that supporting the fuel excise was the best option for Australians. He said that, and I quote, in a beautiful parade between giving money to oil companies and putting money back into Australian roads, generating jobs and confidence, it is clear which way Labor has to go. 
He said it has been reported that the government will use $1.1 billion from the extra revenue it raises to pay for regional road upgrades through the Roads to Recovery program over the next two years. This is a great outcome for people in rural and regional areas, especially in my home state of Victoria. The, co the coalition, according to an article on the ABC, said all excise increases will go into road infrastructure. If that's the case, this means that over the next five years, $3.6 billion will be spent on roads. This may not be good news for the Greens, but for all the other people who don't live in inner city capitals, it is good news. Better roads mean safer roads, and safer roads can help improve road safety. However, the reality is that just how much gets spent on roads will rest with the Treasurer, who has the power to make a determination under Clause 8 of the Fuel Indexation Road Funding, uh, road funding Special Account Bill 2015. I can't say with any certainty that every dollar raised from reintroducing indexation of fuel will be spent on roads. And then what about the other 38 cents per litre that is currently taken that mainly goes into consolidated revenue? The passage of these bills is a bittersweet moment for me. Yes, I want better roads, but I think motorists already pay enough. And I think that actually shadows what Senator Day said just moments ago. These changes will hit low-income earners the most. The price impact of any, increase, of any increase will fall most heavily on households and users of light commercial vehicles and users on road. I'm very concerned about how this, will, uh, how this will affect those on low incomes. And as I said last year in response to the Treasurer's comments about poor people not driving cars, we all can't hop on cows and ride into town. I'm also concerned that apart from the $1.1 billion that will be spent on roads through the Roads to Recovery program, that there is no guarantee that the additional revenue raised from reintroducing ind indexation of fuel will be spent on the roads, as I've previously said. There's just no guarantee. Will this end up in consolidated revenue? And again, what about the 38 cents per litre that is currently paid by motorists? Perhaps there should be a guarantee that a percentage of this amount will be used for improving Australia's infrastructure, so a guaranteed percentage of the current revenue which ends up in consolidated revenue. After all, this Prime Minister is the Prime Minister for infrastructure. I believe this could help provide long-term certainty for infrastructure projects rather than the uncertainty created by annual determinations by the Treasurer or backflips by major parties. Roads are not built in a day. They are long-term projects and need long-term funding and guarantees by the government. Financial assistance grants um, have affected local councils and the money that they can spend on, um, on their um, roads. As was said earlier, they are heavily reliant on the roads um, in their local economy. These are important issues for all motorists and issues that I'll be raising with the Treasurer when I meet with him tomorrow. On this note, I oppose this bill as I believe a lot more could be done for motorists if the taxes they already pay were actually spent on roads instead of general revenue. Rural and, and, and also rural and regional people will be hit the most. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Muir.